I want to go get Gage from the kennel, but before I go, I dropped my phone when I was in Costa Rica and smashed the glass protector that was on it. I'm not convinced that these protectors actually stop anything from happening to the screen itself, other than, than maybe being scratched. Uh, but the protector did smash, the screen didn't, and I do have another one that they gave me when I bought the phone, so I'm going to take a couple minutes and put it on there. And this one, actually, I can uh, use fingerprint identification. The one that you, when you buy the phone, they sell them at Costco, you can't use your fingerprint, which se seems weird. But right away, they were like, we can put in a claim and they will send you a second one immediately. So it's kind of a weird system they have. But anyway, let's throw it on. We'll protect the phone. Wow, how frustrating is that? I get the new screen cover on, it's got the little circle for the fingerprint registration, I do that, and then the first time I try to unlock the phone, it says 100% registered, fingerprint does not match, fingerprint does not match, I can't unlock the phone with it! So, um, anyway, we're gonna go get Gage, it's a 40 kilometer drive, I'm gonna bring, I've got a couple of cameras, I'm just feeling in the mood to get some spring photography. Look at my little umbrella tree right here beside my feeders. Look at the buds! I am super excited to drive my truck. Haven't drove that in 10 days. There's my uh, my old car. My father-in-law bought that off me so that I got to drive my Subaru as well yesterday. That car, I have to mention guys, that car is nine years old. And coming back from Toronto yesterday, uh, that car still handles and drives like a brand new freaking car. It has better suspension and you know tightness in the steering compared to my Mitsubishi which is only five years old that thing feels new I am going back to Subaru I think with the next car uh, we have owned three of them over the years and I freaking love Subaru the tolerance is the the quality it's just there it's better anyway excited to drive the old Dodge truck here <laughs> it does not compare in any way to a Subaru but uh, I still love it let's let's go get Gage there he is. We've got my loyal partner back from the dog pound. Hey, we made a jailbreak. And what we're gonna do guys is we're gonna take this system here, which is our 500 millimeter mirror lens. If you can see in there, it's almost like a telescope in there. It's a refractive uh, lens, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this out and I wanna try some spring photography. You guys know I have used this adapt all 500 millimeter many times on the channel. It's it's a freaking fantastic solution. I paid like $250 for this thing. And what my main thought process here is this connects directly to a nice either full frame or APS-C sized sensor camera, okay? We're not screwing around with trying to hold a phone behind an imaging lens which is what we would be doing with the spotting scope. So not only do we have to take the time to get this thing in focus and everything, then we've got to get the phone behind it and get everything in focus and set up. And depending on how much you're moving the phone around, and if you're not in the exact right place at the right distance with the right eye relief, you're going to get vignetting and you're going to get problems. And these spotting scopes are not cheap. And I pretty much can envision what's going to happen is that none of these companies that I've contacted are going to say, hey, let's send this guy a free spotting scope. And it's going to cost me at least $1,000 for a decent lens that doesn't have chromatic aberration, lets in enough light, uh, is sharp enough. So what I want to talk about is the magnification of this lens. A 500 millimeter lens is equivalent to a 10 times zoom, okay? If you buy a pair of binoculars that says 10 times zoom, you're getting a 500 millimeter lens, which is what this is. Now I've added a piece in here, a two times converter, to make this a thousand millimeter lens, which is the equivalent of a 20 times zoom. So when we're looking at these spotting scopes, they go anywhere from 15 to 48 times zoom, okay, with a 65 millimeter objective. I think this is a 62 millimeter objective on this. So I didn't have to spend a thousand dollars, guys. I'm using equipment I already own, and we're, we're halfway there. We're at 20 times zoom, okay? So now this camera is also an APS-C uh, sensor. So we have to 
multiply this 1,000 millimeters times 1.4. So we're actually getting 1,400 millimeters, right? 400 millimeters is equivalent to eight times zoom. So now we are up to 28 times zoom with this system right here. And I have a digital zoom on this camera, which can go up to two times. Two times 28 would put us at 56 times zoom. Okay, so that's even more than we would get from a spotting scope. And I have little features on this camera such as focus assist. We can zoom in on the back of the screen and make sure we can zoom in on the screen, magnify 10 times to see, hey, am I actually in focus? We can't do that with a spotting scope. You're still kind of guessing. Is my fine-tuned focus, is it really razor sharp? We know when we use this camera whether it is or not. We also have focus peaking, which shows a red outline on things that are in focus. So I'm thinking, save $1,000, Gary. Save a lot of time and energy in buying one of these scopes and just use this setup right here. Is this going to be good enough? I think so. Another benefit to this right here, guys, is we can focus within seven feet of an object. So we can use this for bugs and insects. Those big spotting scopes, you can't do that. 15 feet, some of them, 18 feet, 20 feet, minimum focus distance. It's too far. If you want to shoot little birds, you know, a three inch warbler, and you're only 10 or 12 feet away, you can fill the frame with that bird using this system. With the spotting scope, you can't because it won't focus that close. So we'll start here with the new spring buds right on my little tree here my umbrella tree and i'm going to take a picture of these buds right here and i'll tell you guys it was actually focusing too close i had to back up further than i wanted i had to get about 10 feet away to make the composition that i wanted so let's just take a picture and we'll go from there we will look for some birds and things as well but i don't know i think this is the way to go Unless otherwise posted on the screen, guys, all of the images you guys see will be taken at a thousand uh, millimeters with that two times converter. And of course we have to multiply it by the 1.4 for the APS-C sensor. So that's gonna be 1400 millimeters. All of the images today, which is the equivalent of 28 times zoom, okay? So that's what we're gonna be. I mean, that's, that's crazy. I actually had to back that up to get the, those buds in there, that composition I wanted. So if we had a little bird or something in there, 10 feet is too close, unless you want half of a bird. You know, if you just want the top half or something like that. Speaking of birds, I hear some down here in the swamp. Let's see if we can find some. So it doesn't look like there is a lot of wind here. We're gonna to try to video some of these buds up here. These are cherry blossoms. And we'll just see, you guys will see how much. If you look at that, it doesn't look windy. But you'll see when we actually zoom in on here how much they're blowing around. You guys see the red squirrel way up there in the tree? Well, there's to give you an idea of how much we can zoom in on him with this setup. So because I haven't been home for 10 days, I have no seeds in my bird feeders, so Tom's was a great place to go. There were quite a variety over there. There were some sparrows, white-throated sparrows, 
um, finches, purple finches, gold finches, uh, red winged blackbirds, a few other species came through, some squirrels. So I got some shots, and from looking at the back of the screen, I am reminded that this setup is a little bit just under where I would like it to be in terms of sharpness, but I think that maybe in Photoshop we might be able to bring some of that detail back. I'll show you guys before and after, straight out of the camera and then after I apply some changes to it. And you guys can let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this system good enough without spending $1,000 on a spotting scope? I think it's more convenient than a spotting scope. Um, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. And what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in. So we'll go right into 100%. <laughs> 100% there it is and I'll show you guys it's just a little bit soft uh, you can still see individual feathers in there but to me it's just a touch soft and that's just below the quality of where I would like it but can we make it better by post-processing so let's take a look what I like to do we'll just add very quickly this is what I'll do guys is we do a high pass sharpen and then we're going to do color effects pro 4 and i have a very set routine what i do with this stuff depending on the camera i'm using so i always add a little bit of warmth and a little bit of saturation just a touch and then we're going to add some detail with the detail extractor and even if we put this on zero it actually does sharpen up the image just a tiny little bit so if we turn it off that's with with it off at zero and with it on at zero you can see it brings a whole bunch of detail into this area okay so we'll save that that's the only two things I want to do is just sharpen it up just a little tiny bit and if we zoom in now and here's before and here's after so it just it adds a little just a touch more detail